Hey, this is Garrett Goggin with the Gold Stock Analyst. Today we have Jorge Ganoza, CEO of Fortuna Mining, joining us. Hey, Jorge, thank you for joining us. Good morning, Garrett. Thanks, Thanks for the opportunity here. No problem. Um, I've been covering you. We've been covering you for many years here. Um, you have been a highly valued miner in the past, a fast grower. One of the things that we like about your company is you're one of the few miners that has been able to grow production in lower costs over the past few years. Well, yeah, and we plan to continue doing so. Uh, a big uh, value driver for our company uh, over the next 12 months, Garrett, is the Lindero project. We're bring, uh, building our, our third mine. Uh, this is a, a gold mine, an open pit hip leach operation in uh, northern Argentina. Uh, and we should be uh, bringing Lindero into production towards the end of uh, this coming 2019. And, uh, and, and to talk about valuation, <clears throat> we, we currently have a market cap of about $500 million US, or EBITDA about $100 million dollars a year from or to uh, low cost operating mines both in Argentina in North, southern Mexico and, and southern Peru. Uh, from that steady base of operations we get an EBITDA, an annual EBITDA of around 100 million. Bringing Lindero in production we are going to be in a position to double EBITDA and if you still give me that multiple of five over EBITDA there is a significant potential for re-rating uh, on, on the stock, no? And uh, that is a big catalyst for value over the next 12 months, no? Or, yep. or execution of that project and delivery of that project. Absolutely, I agree with you 100%. Um, I've got you valued at about 3.3.5x uh, EBITDA. Uh, the average silver miner, you know, a lot of them trade for, you know, about 10x. And this is only based off your current free cash flow from San Jose and um, Kaioma. This isn't even including, like you said, Lindero. Um, when you add Lindero, I, I look at you guys in AG equivalent since you produce um, lead and zinc as well. So we convert everything. You're doing about 20 million ounces a year. You add Lindero, uh, that's going to add another 10 million ounces. So you're going to be 30 million ounces of AG equivalent a year. Um, and the market isn't even including that in your current valuation right here. No. I think this has been uh, over the past uh, year a very difficult uh, market for precious metals companies and uh, on top of that we are in uh, the middle of a significant uh, construction so I think the, the market investors in general have been uh, a bit cautious and uh, looking at Fortuna from the sidelines and uh, I think that as we advance with construction and we start the risking the construction uh, process and, and, and advancing, uh, we'll start to get that value from the ground into our valuation, you know? the value that sits on the ground today at the Lindero project. And does, uh, yeah, I does, think Capex, what... does CapEx remain on track at Lindero? Yes, we announced uh, already a, a, a deviation of about 13%, 13, 14% with respect to our original you know, capital estimate. I think that's well within uh, uh, what you would expect. When we made the construction decision, we were relying on uh, basic engineering. That is what supported our feasibility study. And uh, since then, we have moved into detailed engineering, contract awards, and uh, construction. So through all of that, we have only seen a, 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 an increase of about 13% in our capital estimate. And we are well funded to meet all the capital demands we have in front of us, uh, inclusive Lindero and, and the capital requirements of our operating assets in Peru and Mexico. Your big spend is over this fourth quarter 18 and uh, through the first half 19? Yes, that's when we'll see uh, the bulk of capital. 80, by now 85%, 87% of the capital of the project has been committed. No, 
uh, through awards and, and equipment purchases. And uh, so a lot of the, of the, as I said, the capital has been committed already and now we're just advancing with the execution. We currently, our budget currently stands at around $280 million uh, or, or forecast or CapEx forecast is about 280 million. And within that figure, we still carry uh, approximately 20 million, $21 million US in a contingency fund. So we are well funded and uh, we have a credit facility and uh, it's not fully drawn yet. And uh, once fully drawn to help fund the construction or debt to EBITDA, which is a key uh, uh, metric for, for the loan, so will stand at about uh, one, no? Debt to EBITDA of one. And uh, the typical covenant is uh, three to one, no? Right, right, right. Yep, so well within the covenants. Um, you would add a SART plant, right, for the copper at Lindero. Is that correct? Your yes, Lindero, Lindero is a gold copper porphyry. And uh, there is a minor copper in the deposit. It's not an economic driver. Uh, our estimated uh, revenue from copper sales is minimum. Uh, it's about $5 million a year. We estimate we'll be selling. So it's a minimal byproduct. But it needs to be dealt with. Uh, just, I don't want to get into uh, too technical with this, but traditionally copper deposits are not leached. This is not a copper deposit. It's a gold deposit with minor copper. But the minor copper is in calcopyrite, which is a mineral form that does not eat cyanide. And that's key because uh, it, it uh, helps cost and, and make metallurgy viable. So, uh, but it does leach a bit, about 5% of copper in calcopyrite uh, dis dissolves under a leach, cyanide leach solution. And that minor copper makes it into a solution that recirculates in a closed circuit. So we need to purge the pregnant solution of the copper. And uh, that requires a uh, standard technology called SART is the acronym. It's a long name, sulfidification, acidification, recycling and thickening, SART. And, and all of that means a series of uh, tanks uh, where we add, add sulfuric acid, precipitate copper, and uh, recover cyanide. So that also helps the economics of the project because in that process, we not only get rid of the copper, minor copper that's in solution, but also recover cyanide for the process. Okay, that sounds good. It's, it's good you were able to uh, get that solved um, early, early stage. Um, so, you know, your other operations, one of the things, the main thing we like about you is, um, your consistent production, increasing production, um, your all in sustaining costs basically have been decreasing every quarter. Um, some of the, there aren't many miners that are able to do this. One of the only miners that's been able to do this in the gold industry was Rangold and Rangold fetched tremendous premiums due to their consistency of free cash flow. Um, you've been generating or uh, operating cash flow. You've been generating about 20, 20 mil, 25 million um, a quarter since 2016 consistently. And yet, you know, you sell at basically half the valuation of the, of the marketplace, um, not even including Lindero. So, you know, we're interested in continuing following you. Uh, we see you as a tremendous value and we're looking forward to your progress at Lindero. No, uh, yes, and, and uh, as you pointed out, uh, we believe uh, there is a significant room for re-rating in Fortuna. Uh, and, and again, over the last uh, year, the Lindero project in a, in a difficult market where investors have been staying on the sidelines uh, has been waiting on evaluation. Okay. So uh, I think we are in a position to turn that uh, and the way to do it, as I said, is through the successful execution at Lindero. We're doing, we're advancing uh, on full cylinders there, and we should be in a position to pour first gold towards the end of this year. Right. And uh, yeah, that'll be exciting. Yeah. Um, and lastly, uh, there's it's a large property, uh, Lindero is right, and there's outcroppings that you're interested in exploring. Have you done any um, exploration yet? 
Yes, we plan to, we have a, a nearby porphyry called Arizaro. In fact, the Lindero deposit was not discovered at Lindero, it was discovered three kilometers away on a, on a sister porphyry, gold porphyry system called Arizaro. Uh, as things evolved, exploration, this is about 18 years ago, shifted towards the high-grade outcrops at Lindero. And that's where exploration continued and, and, and the resource and that was developed and, and, and eventually what we are building, uh, where we are building a mine today. But Arizaro is only three kilometers away within our property. And um, we have concluded a, a phase of exploration there. The previous owners of this project, uh, Gold Rock Mines, Uh, reported about half a million ounces of resources, inferred resources, at Arizar. When we came in, we believed that the geologic model needed further understanding before declaring a resource, so we did not include that resource in our inventories. We took it out. Since then, we have done more drilling. We will be publishing an update of results on the Arizaro drilling early next year. And uh, we are expecting that with those results, our aim would be to see if we can publish uh, a first resource of our own at Arizaro. What we view at, Ari at Arizaro is the potential for a satellite deposit that can contribute to add high-grade, uh, near-surface high-grade mineralization to Lindero. Lindero currently has a... a projected mine life of 13 years. We have 13 years of reserves and the, the heap will continue to recover gold for about 15 years. So it's a long-lived asset, low cost, and uh, we expect that Arizaro can help contribute to enhance the production profile of uh, Lindero in, in the short, medium term. What sort of, it, does it contain the small copper component as well? And what sort of grades are you seeing at Alessandro? Arizaro, yes, it does con carry copper. And that's why the SAR plant is key, because this is porphyry country where we are. And uh, all of the mineralization hosted in porphyries will most likely come with some degree of copper. So the SAR plant allows us to uh, access all of these deposits with proven technology and uh, make them viable. So yes, grains at Arizaro, we have drill intervals with as high as 0.8 grams per ton gold uh, over significant widths, you know, as much as 100 meters. Uh, but still, those are drill intercepts we need to make them in, into a coherent, put them together as a coherent uh, model and produce a resource. And uh, we are hopeful that worst case, we cannot produce a resource early next year. There is, we'll be publishing the results and I think it will be fairly evident the potential to add a, a, a satellite deposit that can contribute to the economics of Lindero and further enhance the economics of Lindero. Something that I'd like to add uh, before we conclude, Garrett, is that in this price environment, Fortuna's EBITDA margin is about 40%. EBITDA in the last quarter at our uh, San Jose mine is over 50%. And EBITDA at our Cayoma mine in Peru is around 38%. In this price environment, 38%, 36% combined 40%. Lindero not only brings significant gold production to a, pro, to a profile, but also it's uh, margin neutral. EBITDA margin at Lindero will be hovering around 40% life of mine. And the initial years are very uh, accretive in terms of margin will be mining mineralization, the highest grade mineralization at Lindero outcrops on surface and uh, with very low stripping. No? 
and the highest grade mineralization of the deposit is sitting on surface. So we, our initial years are going to be very robust. And, uh, you know, again, we need to unlock that value. And uh, over the next 12 months, you'll see us doing that. The, um, the margins that you reference, um, I basically have you, have you tracking at about 40% as well, which is the highest in the silver industry, if not very high up there in the gold industry. Do you feel as if you have a target on your back um, for a you know more highly valued miner to be able to come in, um, you know, purchase these these cheap uh, operating cash flow or free cash flow numbers, and immediately have them jacked up to their uh, value uh, their multiple, which is double yours. You know that is always a a, a scenario that we need to contemplate. You typically do not see transactions taking place while you're in the middle of a significant construction. Uh, so, and that's where we are. And I believe that as we advance with construction, the, the numbers will find, will, will make sense. We cannot continue. As I said, uh, our, our EBITDA is a hundred million dollars a year. Our market cap today in US is what, around 500 million, a bit higher today. Uh, so it's a multiple of five on EBITDA. Uh, if I take, we will be in a position to double EBITDA, take it to $200 million a year with Lindero's first year of production. You know, things need to balance out. So right. if you still give me the, the five multiple on EBITDA, do your math, right? Yep. 200 million EBITDA with a multiple of five, that's a billion dollar market cap. Yep. Yep. Uh, we're not issuing shares, no. Uh, we have always been very conservative with uh, shareholder dilution. Mm. Uh, we're funding the construction of Lindero with modest uh, debt. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not highly leveraged by any means. Mm -mm. So uh, we have, well, our, our minds are performing well. We have decent mine lives at the two operations in Mexico and Peru. Right. So, uh, no, I think we're in a very strong position, but we need to unlock that value. Yep. We need to unlock the value of Lindero. Yep. And I think that's what investors should be following over the next months. Right, right, right. Um, and you mentioned um, that you're going to be able to add this uh, Lindero without any um, dilution. You've done a good job, you know, creating uh, accretive projects without diluting shareholder value and the whole Alessandra, you'd be able to build all that um, without any dilution. You'd be able to do that through your existing free cash flow, which is, you know, important to create, an, you know, a higher stock price. Value is created on a per share basis, you know, and uh, we are very cognizant of that. And uh, we have also been very conservative in how we grow this company. And, uh, you know, over the last 12, 14 years, we've done only three transactions, but those have been very accretive transactions for our shareholders, no? Yep. Uh, and I think uh, we're going to prove with Lindero once again that we can add uh, significant value for our shareholders. Good. All right, Jorge. Thank you very much. Happy holidays. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Gold Stock Analyst has been providing independent Precious Metal Research since 1996. We offer three publications, GSA Pro, GSA Top 10, and GSA Silver. For more information, please visit us at our website, www.goldstockanalyst.com.